John and Gloriana, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having us. Yes, thanks for having us. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, so I heard about this project through uh, some of the guys over at Ebex Mercado and wanted to chat with you guys about this project of a Bitcoin diploma in El Salvador. But before we get into that, let's hear a little bit about uh, each of you, John and then Gloriana. Yeah, sure. I could uh, I could start with that. So my name's John. I'm from New York. I'm from the United States. Um, I've been here living in El Salvador since August. Uh, prior to this, I had worked at the United Nations in New York for about 10 years, and I had worked as a, as a journalist. I actually worked here as a journalist on Legal Tender Day, September 7th, for Al Jazeera and BBC. Um, but I, I realized how important what was happening here is and and i just um you know i want to i want to make a difference in the world and i think bitcoin education in el salvador is a high leverage opportunity to to really make a difference so i'm i'm uh, i've been just focused on that ever since excellent and gloriana let's hear a little bit about your background as well um yeah i'm actually 27 i'm from costa rica originally and um, I've been living here for almost three years now. Um, it's been a it's been a great journey. Um, I study. I'm a chef, actually. <laughs> I'm not. Um, <laughs> and um, we met John. Um, well, I met John like uh, maybe seven months ago, or no, no, in in August, right? Uh, I think we met in perfect. August. Yeah. Sorry. I think September, but yeah, around then, August, September. September, September, yeah, and uh, and yeah, I I've been in the in the I, I'm gonna say in the space because I didn't start with Bitcoin, <laughs> so um, I'm in this space for a couple of years, and then we met John, and and yeah, we decided to 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 run this project, and uh, it's been it's been amazing since then. Yeah, right. And so uh, let's hear a little bit about it. Like, so what is this uh, Bitcoin diploma idea? Like, how did this get started? Yeah, so I think maybe it makes sense to to uh, to start at the beginning, right? The Bitcoin diploma is a little bit more recent. So we, we began in September. Just the idea was that so much of the population here, and, and when I'm thinking back to September and I say so much, I'm it's like outside of El Zante, um, 99% of the population, over 99% of the population had basically zero knowledge of, of Bitcoin. Um, so there was a huge need for education. Uh, so what we started doing, the very first thing that we did was, was to create some introduction classes, some basic classes to bring people from zero to one that were targeting people that knew nothing about Bitcoin. They might even be a little skeptical about it. Um, and just this 90 minute intro of the basics. And at the end of the class, they got some sats. Uh, so they downloaded a wallet, we sent them sats. Maybe they sent it to the next student or something like that. They, they got some practical um, use of it, which we have found is a great way to teach, to, to show rather than tell or, or incorporate some showing in there. Um, so we we just we started just with that and <laughs> humble beginnings. We we had a total of five students in September, um, and you know seventy nine in October, three almost three hundred in November, um, and and you know we've continued on that trajectory. But we've also expanded since then. Like we have a monthly meetup, uh, which is my favorite night of the month because that's like a giant class, and we give we give Bitcoin. Um, we give five dollars in Bitcoin to the first hundred people that come, and we work out a discount with the with the venue. So we give people some sets, and we give them a reason to use it. And oftentimes, it's people. And our target demographic has always been Salvadorians who are brand new to the space, um, which is most of the country. Um, so from from there we we've we've basically just expanded we've taken every opportunity that came our way to expand if it's bitcoin education in el salvador then we want to then we want to help it um so the diploma program gloriana is actually the the teacher of the of the first pilot program that we're doing in in san marcos um so that was there was just a, a meeting in february 
you know, we had gotten some momentum. We had we had grown our base a little bit, um, and and we just had an opportunity. There was a meeting. The the director of the school was interested in doing something with Bitcoin, even though he he wasn't uh, very well versed or really versed at all in Bitcoin, but he understood that this is something that the next generation should probably get a handle on. And, and, uh, and he wanted to organize something for his school. So he invited, um, uh, myself, uh, Ibex was there. Uh, Ibex actually invited us, um, and a number of other people and just a very broad meeting about Bitcoin and how we might do something in his school. Uh, and from, from that larger meeting, then, um, me from our Bitcoin and Ibex, we had a kind of a follow up with him. We were the ones that were like most excited about like, OK, let's let's like do something as soon as possible. Um, and uh, and and, you know, we had a pretty tight timeline because we wanted to uh, be able to teach every every student this year at the school in the final year of the school. Um, so we we had to we had to get started right away. And this is probably where Gloriana could could take off because not only is she a the teacher there, but she's she's also helped develop the curriculum there. Excellent. So Gloriana, how did you get involved? Um yeah, actually, well at, at the beginning with the organization, I was, you know, just teaching um some of some other students. Um probably I, I've teach uh, I don't know how many students, but probably like um around 800 or, or, or maybe a thousand students since then. And, um, and yeah, we started with the diplomado with the, with the diploma or the diplomado in Spanish. Um, we started, uh, with the content maybe, maybe around January, February. And, um, yeah, as John said, we had a, like, we had to, we had to hurry up because, um, we had a deadline which it was like um, two or one one month and a half after we started, so um, so yeah, we we team up. John John came with this amazing team that um, we're working with um, one of our one of our um, one of our team members that's called Raúl, and then um, he added um, Dalia and and Robert that they're like um, this. Um, experts in in you know in pe- pe- how to say it? Ped- pedagogy pedagogy, pedagogy. pedagogy. Yeah, like the teaching idea. method pedagogy. exactly because because we i mean we we teach you know we used to teach but we, we we're not experts in right. in this area specifically so so we had to go um through them and 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 with their help you know and we started to develop the the content and um it was a uh, it was challenging and and it still is because um we started working in on on english and then we had to translate it everything spanish and we're talking about uh, maybe 80 pages around 80 page, pages of content because the thing is that actually you know it, it was harder to do it this way but um there's not a lot of information in Spanish about Bitcoin. So, yeah. So we had to do it in, in English and yeah. then translate it to a Spanish. So, um, yeah, actually you have, um, well, the diploma, um, is, is, uh, 10, 10 weeks, right? 10 weeks. Yeah. Of- so the, the idea behind the curriculum development was Gloriana and Raul, who are two teachers who have been working with the project since, since September they have this real world experience, but they are, and like, you know, maybe we'll talk about individual stories about people in the project later, but um, this isn't their, they're not, they're not teachers by training, right? They, they didn't, they don't have a master's in teaching. They, they just saw a need for it. And, and I think everybody in the project is just really motivated to, to help educate. Uh, so the idea was that they were experts in teaching Salvadorians about Bitcoin. But we brought in some people uh, from the United States who are experts in teaching, right? They're not here on the ground. They don't they don't have that that context that Gloriana and Rule have, but they have this very deep knowledge of pedagogy and all that. So the idea was to kind of combine the strengths to come up with the curriculum from these two different groups. Um, and it's been it's yeah, been sure. I was only there the the first week, uh, but you know obviously Gloriana is there every week, and and it was really exciting to see to see how receptive the students were um, 
you know, it's something, it's something new. Like this is, this is, uh, I think a very interesting subject for the students to learn about. And the school has been, you know, the director, as I mentioned before, has been a really great partner. Like he's very, um, innovative. Uh, his school has actually grown quite a bit. It was 200 students three years ago, something like that. Um, mm-hmm. And it's grown to about 800 students in part because of programs like this Diplomato and Bitcoin. Uh, parents are taking their students out of nearby schools and putting them in this school because, because they are doing innovative things. So he's a, he's a great partner to work with. Um, and, and it's just, and San Marcos is, is, uh, is like a, a community that I think, um, you know, like I, I'd love to, to get to know it as well. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just really happy that, that everything seems to have fallen into place, but maybe Gloriana could talk about, uh, like the experience in the classroom. Yeah, maybe maybe it's good to mention that this school it's outside the the capital and um it's um uh, you know, it's a school in in social risk in a certain way. So so for us or personally for me, you know, teaching them about this it's like um showing them that there's a you know, that there's hope behind what they see in their houses and what they experience um while they're growing up. So, so, so yeah, um, kids are very receptive, you know, they're, they're, um, 16, 17, 18 years old. So for sure, some of them, you know, they're not that interested because, um, you know, when, when, when we're young, you don't, you don't, um, necessarily see the, the opportunities, you know, as they are. Um, yes, I, I, I remember when I was in high school and, um, I, I, I always, um, joke about this but um in my school they had um german german classes and i also asked like who wants to learn german you know and then like 10 years after that i'm like crap why why didn't learn german you know it's uh so sometimes you cannot see the 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 value yeah yeah the value yeah behind but 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 either way, um, you already start. We we just um, we're having the f- the fifth class in in this this Thursday um this Saturday. Um, this Saturday yeah this Saturday and you 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 already see you know the the kids that are more interested. Um, of course, they don't have any knowledge, so the the questions they ask are like super crazy questions in the sense that they don't have the you know the knowledge to make like a. Yeah, I, I don't know, like a um, concurrent um, question, of course. but yeah. Um, yeah, it's been awesome. It's been awesome because you already see the kids that approach you after the class and they're like, hey, I'm 17 years old, but I'm, I'm super, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm super excited about Bitcoin. I want to learn more. Can, can I get into some WhatsApp groups or, or um, maybe next year I can teach with you guys and, you know, stuff like that. And uh and yeah, at the end of the story, if, even if you get like a, a small percentage of the kids that are interested, I think that's we we have one with the with the project. So so yeah, it's it, it has been an immers- an amazing journey, and uh, everything's going great. Yeah, yep. yeah. I'm curious as well because um, as probably listeners know, a lot of the Bitcoin material out there is in English. The podcasts are in English. Mm-hmm. The books are in English. Then it's about well, what material is there in Spanish? that uh people can leverage and of course i mean i know even um some of the some of my colleagues in swan had this bitcoin in espanol and there are you know there's other people out there uh there's lunatic coin i know he's like a well-known uh-huh. like spanish bitcoin podcast guy so uh you know i'm sure there's people out there and there's material that can be leveraged but it also has to be packaged in a way that a school high school student will accept that um as opposed to uh material that might be given at a more adult level i suppose so has that been your experience as well you're trying to take some of this material and make it accessible for them and what kinds of material are you covering in the cl- in the classes for them yeah so so we have um 10 weeks of uh, the course is 10 weeks the first two weeks um there it's all about money you know history of money starting for from what is money you know we we don't we don't get um financial or economic classes in in high school so we actually um 
as a grown ups, we don't know what even money is, you know, how is it printed, what it's, uh, I don't know, concepts like inflation, deflation, you know, all this, all this kind of stuff. So t the first two weeks, um, we cover all the, the, the money part, you know, like fiat, to be honest, but, but more like, um, The, mon the, the money part. And then from week um, three to week nine, we go through, no, week three to week eight, we go um, Bitcoin 101, you know, um, starting from when it was created, who created it, well, who created it. Um, and then, and then yeah, we go through mining to blockchain. Um, we go through, um, you know, it, it, we, we, we cover everything like in general terms, you know, from Bitcoin. So, From week three to week um, eight, we cover Bitcoin. Then week nine, we have uh, Bitcoin in the future. Like this is telling the students, okay, now now that you know all this stuff, what comes from you for you in El Salvador? What's gonna be Bitcoin in the future for you? What kind of um, things you can do? Where can you apply? For example, what kind of um, you know uh, where, where can you get a, a job from or or you know, it's, it's Bitcoin in the future for El Salvador. And then the, the last week it's, uh, their, pre their final presentation that it's, um, basically a, a practical presentation where you can, where you need to show like, well, I, I'm not sure if I can say it like, yeah. But, but yeah, I could, I could talk about the, the last week. Uh, uh -huh. so the, the final exam, what, what we've developed was it will be a couple of parts. The first part is to create a wallet and then restore it on another device. Uh, the, second, ah, cool. the second task is to make a transaction on chain, find it in a blockchain explorer, and explain when and why that can be considered secure. And the third part is to bring in uh, a no-coiner, to bring in you know, your aunt, your uncle, um, and walk them through steps one and two. And then the fourth part is and this so we we really like the the first two because that's um you know it's very it's very black and white you know it's like you either did it or you didn't it's very binary uh and then the third part is to encourage them to to think about teaching and education like how to explain this to someone new um because ultimately we want you know we want students to become teachers uh and then the the fourth part and this isn't you know this is the sort of question where every answer is correct. It's not like we're going to fail someone based on this answer, but we want, we want them to start thinking about this, how Bitcoin um, can change their world, how Bitcoin can change themselves, their country and the world. Um, so, so that's to get them thinking about the big picture. So uh, the, the idea with, with all of this is, um, is just to speed the adoption of Bitcoin and speed education of Bitcoin. And I think, I think this is a really strategic demographic because one, they're open to it, right? They're not, they're not entrenched in this legacy financial system. Um, so they're just open to new ideas and they can naturally become teachers, right? So whether they literally become teachers in a, in a future iteration of the program or whether they just go home and they talk about it to, to their parents, to their little sister, um, So, so everything is, is focused on that and everything is focused on replicating this, right? Like once we, this is a pilot. So we have hired uh, Sid Gallup to, to do a survey. They did a survey before the classes began in this community and the school. And they'll do another one in December when this is all finished. And then we'll be able to see, you know, it's an impact survey. So we'll be able to see what the difference is. The students in the first day of class, they write in their notebook, what is Bitcoin? What do you know about Bitcoin? Um, and no, actually, sorry, Jen. Sorry, Jen. Actually, the question is why Bitcoin? Why Bitcoin? That's, that's the, exactly. That, and, that's, the, that's the first thing they do in the first class of, of, of the diploma. But yeah, continue. And then, and then they write that on the last day, the last class. There's another blank page. So we'll be able to compare how they progressed over that 10 weeks. And we'll be able to um, assess how the community progressed because we're also starting this upcoming Saturday after the classes at the school uh, for the students. We're going to have open classes for the for the public, for the community. So, you know, teachers, parents that know about the program, they're a little bit curious or maybe they are <laughs> possibly even hostile. 
uh, it's, it's a chance for them to come and, and learn about Bitcoin. So we, we don't just want to change the school. We want to change the surrounding area as well. Um, and we want to be able to prove that we've done it. So we're, we're, we're taking a lot of steps to be able to do that because the, the goal is that this is just the beginning, right? This is one school. If we could prove that it worked here, then, then we could use that example and, and put it, um, eventually all over this country and then beyond El Salvador, you know, once, once we, it's all about creating positive examples. And I think, you know, shout out to Bitcoin beach because they, they are the original positive example, right. Of what's possible. Um, because of Bitcoin beach, I, I don't think El Salvador adopts Bitcoin without that example, without that like example to hold up. Um, I don't think I'm here without that. I don't think me premier Bitcoin exists without that. So, so the idea is to just continue that of creating positive examples in order to to uh, accelerate the growth and adoption. Gotcha. And so how do you see that expanding out in future? Do you see that as, okay, here, this success, ideally, if, the, if it goes successfully, then you're going to try to roll that out to other schools? Like, what does that look like? Yeah, so there's, there's a couple of things. We are planning to... Um, to be capable of doing that on our own. So with, with the curriculum, what they're using now is version 1.0. They're, they're working on the curriculum group is working on 2.0, but end of the year, well, 3.0, which I think by 3.0, we'll be pretty confident that we can share this very widely. Uh, we're also the, the ministry of education, um, is all, we had a meeting with them last Thursday with Bitcoin Beach and, and some people from the Bitcoin community. It was a large meeting. There were 21 people there. Uh, and they, they want to incorporate Bitcoin education into the, into the school system. Like they want, they want to have their own you know, project where they, where they do this on a national level. Um, and the idea is that the curriculum that we've developed and the lessons that we'll learn from from this pilot program, they'll be able to to use that and borrow from that in order to 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 work with a larger coalition ourselves, Bitcoin Beach, um, to to uh, to to put that in the public school system next year. So the details are still to be worked out. Like it's still in the early stages. The way that the school year works here is it it's basically around the the, the calendar year, right? So the Classes begin in January, so they start at the at the beginning of the year. Um, so we have until January, but you know it's a big task. We're going to have to train teachers, right? Because the the we're going to need hundreds of teachers, and there's maybe dozens that are capable now of of imparting this knowledge on students. If that, maybe like two or three dozen, um, and we're going to need hundreds. So so there's we. Uh, we need to get started soon if we want to scale it at the national level. Yeah, I see. And so people talk about this idea of train the trainer because in that sense, you're going to have to go and teach the other people who can then teach. And so they will uh, have to know enough about Bitcoin to be able to answer questions from right. the students. Exactly. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, it's not a small order, I guess. Uh, but of course, there's plenty of material out there. It's about... Uh, making finding what's suitable getting that in front of the right audience maybe getting the right translations or having the right stuff that's just natively spanish material um and so what would you say are the main hurdles right now is it things like uh you know do most people have smartphones do most people ha have um the you know uh the right i guess hardware and things like that like uh, you know things like that to be able to uh use bitcoin and learn about it um, yeah, in terms of cell phones, there's actually more cell phones per capita in El Salvador than there are in the United States. So that's that's not an issue. Uh, other things like hardware wallets, there aren't in shipping. The shipping system here mm -hmm. isn't great. It's not easy to, to get things from outside. Um, so I think the biggest hurdle, and I'd love to hear what Gloriana has to say too, I think the biggest hurdle is more intellectual, just that this is a brand new thing. Um, and there's there's an association that Bitcoin is tied to the government here, which you know, mm -hmm. maybe for some people, maybe that makes them more likely to use it. But for others, it makes it less likely. And it also uh, people 
initially conflate Chibo, the, the, the government Bitcoin application, with Bitcoin, right? They think they're the same thing. Um, and that's, that's one of the, one of the import, important things that we need to do in education here is to, is to teach people about Bitcoin um, that isn't tied to, to anything here, that this is a, a global system. I think there's some people that, that think that, you know, Bukele is, um, has some role in like, you know, core development and that, <laughs> Things like that. that are- yeah, there, there, there are people that think that this is Bukele's coin, yeah. you know, and that's uh, that's where we come. That's where, where where we come. You know, it's it, it's been very challenging for us because the student has to unlearn, to relearn, and, and you know, to to um, to stop thinking the way they they were, to start thinking the way it is, and uh, that's that. I, I think that's been the the most challenging part where people disconnect the idea they had to, they had to, um, you know, reconnect the, the, the real part. So that that's been, um, yeah, the, the most challenging part maybe, but, um, and, and there's also another thing that I think it's, it's, you know, a, a bit challenging. And that's, and that's the reason why I think that um, a lot of students are not coming to our classes in, you know, because of course we, we have a lot of students in our classes, but there's a, there's a percentage of the population that they're, they're just not interested. And that's because of trading. And that's um, people, people always relate Bitcoin with trading and they're always related with a, with an investment, you know, and then, with generating money and uh, that's a that's a good point to mention because we don't teach about about trading you know that's yeah. of course yeah we just we just teach about bitcoin per se and the uh, and all that the you know all the the benefits that the bitcoin comes with and uh, and yeah i think those two points are are very important to and, and we've had to yeah, have because one thing that i heard that was maybe a Maybe it's a criticism or maybe it's just a point that people I've heard people saying is they sort of associated it with like trying to trade in and out of USD and Bitcoin as opposed to like actually trying to earn sats or spend sats. And, uh, or the other one that people have is like the other criticism is that, okay, there was an early airdrop of I think 25 or $30 to each person and they just spend that and then they don't use it again sort of thing. That yeah. was another criticism I heard as well. So I'm curious of your if you have any thoughts to add there of your take on the ground when you're talking to people. Yeah. I, I also think that, so this is, you know, it's been a challenge. We've, I, I am amazed with the growth that we've had. Um, you know, like we, we really started from zero and, and now I think we're a real force here, but uh, there's been a lot of challenges. One is that we're focused on in-person education because we do have some online classes, but we find that students just connect a lot better in person. Um, so, you know, mm-hmm. we started this at the tail end of a global pandemic. So there was a, there's a challenge like gathering people in person with that. Um, there's also, we're currently in El Salvador, there's a state of exception, right? That we've been in for, we're in the second month of that now. And it's, it doesn't uh, have a huge effect right now, but in the beginning, it, it definitely, people went straight home from work, right? Like no one was going out. Um, when when this first began, so that was a challenge, and now now with the the price of Bitcoin is is a current challenge, right? So there's when the price is going up, then we notice that there's more interest, m- more curiosity. People are reaching out to us like, oh, I want to learn about Bitcoin. What is this Bitcoin that I keep hearing about? When the price is going down, there's just less interest. That's 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 how it is. So we're we're always trying to find ways to. To, to mitigate whatever the current challenge is to, to continue our growth trajectory. Um, but I would say right now, the biggest challenge besides ones that are always there, you know, association with like a political association. Um, I think the the biggest challenge is just getting people interested, even if the price may be in decline. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the other point as well is people, and rightly so, they would be interested in things like jobs, pathways, right? So right. they that also 
needs to be there that people are going to learn about Bitcoin, but then they also need to see that there's a way for them to, for example, earn Bitcoin. And if that isn't there, then it's sort of like, you know, it's like those, um, like an analogy is like, uh, I've heard in different countries, right? They might have, let's say, a lot of places for people to go and study medicine, but then there's not enough jobs for them to actually go and become a yeah. doctor or a nurse or something afterwards. So it's kind of a similar kind of thing that you need, they need there needs to be that overarching ecosystem yeah. and of course with el salvador it's it's ideally primed for that but it, it you sort of it's a bit of a chicken and egg problem there right 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 and and there is that's something that we're actively thinking about so for the diploma program we're working with some with some bitcoin companies here that are that are looking for talent and the idea is that in this pilot program like the top students will get like a paid internship or you know a pathway to to a job here with a bitcoin company um and we hope that that create some momentum, you know, other, their peers will see it and be like, oh, okay, there's actually, there's, there's a, there's, there's something at the end of this. Right. Um, and because there is, there are a lot of Bitcoin companies here that are looking for talent. Right. So the challenge is to create that talent pool, to grow that talent pool exactly. and to demonstrate that, that we're actually doing that. And to Gloriana's point earlier about uh, the school that we're doing this in is um, I forget the phrase that, she was, but like socially vulnerable or something like that. Like gangs are a presence in this area. Uh, the, the director of the school told us in a two month period this year um, that I think it was 26 or 29 students dropped out to join gangs. Uh, that's just in a two month period, just in this one school. Um, so people join gangs here primarily for economic reasons, right? They join gangs because they, uh, in this demographic, especially, you know, like 15 year olds, 16 year olds. Um, because their family doesn't have enough money to feed themselves tomorrow. So they're thinking, you know, very short time frame. how can I make money tomorrow? Like right now, they're not thinking like of a career path five years from now, 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. And one of the great things about Bitcoin is it changes our time preference. Right. Um, so I think, I, I really think that we could change communities with Bitcoin education here and and encourage people to change their time preference. And I think that would have not just encourage people to change their time preference, but provide pathways, right? Alternatives to what is there. The alternatives are to, to work with these Bitcoin companies. Yeah. Gloriana, anything to add there just around economic opportunities and pathways for people? Yeah, I think we we have to have in mind that we're just the the adoption just started and um we had this like hype, you know, in in um November, October, November cuz the the law just passed and uh, there was a lot of um I think the the um tourism um raised like 30% just focus on bitcoin the 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 tourism um raised 30% in November so we had this, you know, this hype and a lot of um, places were receiving, bit, accepting Bitcoin and, and stuff. So we had this, like, this hype and then they left, like, you know, they, they went back home. All the people went back home. And, uh, well, some people say, like John, some some people that, that had um, work to do here, they say. Um, but, but that's important to think that um, I think, that, or from my point of view, we just started the adoption, like the real, like the real adoption just started. So um, I think there's going to be a room for everyone that, that, that knows about Bitcoin, because there's a lot of um, international investment that's coming. You know, there is some buildings that they're um, going to develop. And uh, I know that some hotels are coming and i'm pretty sure that even if it's not in the technological part you know if you know about about bitcoin and the projects are bitcoin develop developers or 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 the or the projects are developed based on bitcoin um i think they're they're gonna have a lot of opportunities here we also um there's a huge space for programmer programmer programmers yes yeah, it Yep, and uh, we don't have we there's a there's a need of this, and uh, I know that some uh, there's some projects working on this too. So I think that from my point of view, there's going to be room for for a lot of people if 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 we teach well and they learned about Bitcoin. Yeah, and and we also we also hope to be an example, right? Um, so 
we only use Bitcoin. So Gloriana, uh, you know, she quit her job and she works for the project now and she gets paid 100% Bitcoin. She spends all her money in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Everyone in the project, we, we, we are trying to, you know, we, we tell our students um, about what's possible and we try to show them too by, right. by actually living that. Uh, so, you know, we've, we've been able to peel off a number of people from the fiat world and put them on the Bitcoin standard. And I think just that example is is a powerful way to to show students that um, this is real. It is actually very powerful because what I, I love to mention this in, during my classes, you know, because that's like I'm I'm the vivid example of of that that that, that is possible. And uh, people at the end at the at the beginning, I'm sorry, they're like a, a, a bit skeptical about it, and and they don't think that is it is true. And then. Um, I'll show them that I can pay my my phone bills and my I go to the same supermarket every time because they accepted Bitcoin. I go to the same gas station because I accept Bitcoin. Um, my dog, you know, ha has his food and the the vaccines and everything he needs. And uh, you know, I I. I, I I leave, you know, and that's uh, that's that's the reality that maybe a lot of people don't think it's possible because you know because of the volatility volatility of the of the coin, but um, but yeah, it is possible, you know, and and it's just not me. And there's a couple of people that just receive their their whole salary in Bitcoin and and while while leaving, you know, and uh, and, and yes, yeah, as, as John says, um, we just. We don't just um, talk about it, but we we prove, you know, we we show the students that it is possible, and uh, and the teacher that is teaching them is living the the this way. So, so yeah, we're 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 living the dream, and and we're we're teaching them that it's possible to you know to do it in order. To, That's cool. Yeah. So, for anyone listening who might want to get involved, help out somehow, what kinds of things are you guys looking for in terms of whether that's someone volunteering or helping, or what kinds of things uh, are you looking for? Yeah. So, there's there's a few different things. It probably depends on whether they're here in El Salvador or they're outside of El Salvador. Uh -huh. um, here in El Salvador, I think the the best thing someone could do is to come to one of our meetups. We have every the last Thursday of the month in San Salvador, so that will be next Thursday. Or sorry, I don't know when this will be published, but the last Thursday of the month, um, and in San Miguel, the second Thursday of the month, and meet the team and talk to us individually. Uh, so we're always looking for for students. We're looking for people to that are able to reach out in their own communities. Oftentimes people will kind of organize a, a group of people and then we just show up and teach them, right? It's like, hey, I live in such and such a place. Um, and, you know, I, I gathered a bunch of my neighbors and friends next Saturday. Can you guys come in and teach us all? Um, and if you're abroad, then I think a, a great way to help is, uh, is actually just to send us some sats because, as I said, we we only use Bitcoin, right? And, and our idea is to combine um, education with practical use. And when I say practical use, it's, it's them actually using Bitcoin. So we give them, we gift them Bitcoin so they could use it on their own uh, outside of class. Um, and also, you know, we're trying, to, we're trying to encourage the circular economy here. Um, so from the outside sats and also just sharing on social media, just getting a little bit more exposure to everything. Uh, but if if they're in El Salvador, we would love to we'd love to meet them and and maybe see what their skill set is that that we could use. Yeah, I think that as John said, um, it depends where they live. Even if they're in San Salvador, for example, for, because um, I think we haven't mentioned about um, San Miguel, which is the like the eastern part of the country. That's um, it's near where Bitcoin City is going to be built, and uh, they have like this amazing places, this amazing um, beaches and stuff. But they're far away; they're like three hours away from the capital. So, so they've always felt like they they have been um, how you say neglected. Um, sorry, neglected. They've they felt neglected. Yeah, yeah, like 
exactly so so we have started um giving classes there where, where if we think that people in the capital don't know about bitcoin there's like we're starting over right there in the eastern part of the country so that's why i'm saying that it depends where they are because for example if um if there's someone in san miguel that wants to help they're probably it's going to be easier to get them into the team because they're in this particular area that we're developing or starting developing the our growth and um in this project too so so yeah it depends where they are and how can we like accommodate them into the into the expansion that that we're having in mind so but yeah anyone that wants to help in 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 any in you know in any way say it that way um yeah they're, they're welcome in yeah, and, and speaking uh, of yeah. the learning materials, is that going to be made available for other people who want to, let's say, take some of the material and then actually teach the class using the material that your team has created or generated? Yes, actually, um, we're working in the in the two point uh, version, and uh, you know, because there's there's always um, some details that you have to uh, improve, and that's what and and we want to give the the people, you know, the the um the best quality of content sure. yeah and uh so so yeah we're, we're thinking actually there's a lot of people you know asking when we when we uh tweet about the diploma or one of our team members tweet about the diploma you have like 50 comments hey where can i what where can i get it is there a pdf are you selling it on, on ebooks or is it on amazon i don't know there's a lot of questions so we're definitely working on it and we're definitely gonna um make uh make it available for for you know not not only for the country but for you know um whoever wants to to buy it and learn from it so so yeah the answer is yes we're we're actually working on it i think that um in a couple of months we're gonna be ready and um and yeah the the plan is to get the you know because the content is made to be used right of course yeah it's 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 not for us it's for the people that wants to learn so so, but we want to, we, we want to give, you know, a quality of content. So, so we're, we're developing right now. And, and I think we're going to be ready in a couple of Yeah. Months. It's something that I don't we're know. actively yeah. thinking about because we've gotten, I, I, I mean, I was surprised at, at how, um, how many comments, how many messages we got like, Hey, I'm mm -hmm. in, I'm in India. I'd love to use this in my community. Can you send this? I'm in South Africa. Can I use this here from all over the world? Um, all over the world. So, so uh, we want to do two things. We want to, we're thinking about doing two things. One is to monetize it, right? Because we, we are self-funded, right? We, the more Bitcoin we have, the faster we could grow. And we want to grow as fast as possible. So can we, can we sell this, right? But also we want to spread it because our mission is to spread Bitcoin education, not just here, but around the world. So it's like, there there would be plenty of exceptions to that. So it's like, hey, if you live in this community and you don't have uh, the resources to be able to to buy this, and, and the thought is that when you buy this content, that you would be supporting us, right? But mm -hmm. maybe you just don't have the resources to do that and you shouldn't be limited by that. So we'll, we'll give it away to some people and sell it to others. Excellent. Well, uh, yeah, I think that that's cool to hear uh, that there's work being done to take some of this material out there and make it accessible for students and uh, also make it accessible for other communities around the world. So that's great to hear. Um, so can you guys just tell everyone who's listening where they can find you online and what's the best way to get in touch if they would like to? Yeah, um, so our website is, well, we have it in both languages, but uh, in English it's myfirstbitcoin.io and then for social media i think on all our social media platforms which is facebook instagram and twitter it's myfirstbitcoin underscore fantastic and you can also find it by mi primer bitcoin right. which is in spanish so either way because because we have like the the account name and then you can put the i don't know how's it called but the other name you know yeah like, yeah, you yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. so, so you, you can yeah. either find it in English or in Spanish. Yeah. So I can see the website here is miprimabitcoin.io. So that's uh -huh. also there. So I'll put all exactly. that in the show notes for listeners. And uh, yeah, John and Gloriana, thanks very much for joining me and uh, all, all the best with your uh, project. 
Yeah. Thank you, so Thank you for having us. Yeah. <laughs> Are you planning on coming to El Salvador? Yeah, actually, sometime? I came uh, last November for adopting Bitcoin, and I'll uh, I'm probably going to be back again this November. So if you're around, um, definitely catch up. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, for okay. sure. Let us know. Thanks, It'll guys. Be great to have you. All right. Yeah. Bye. Thank you.